guys, this is Pretty Joe, and this is the first video in building a game in Unity. Now, what we're doing in this video is creating the main menu, which is definitely the easiest point to start from in any game. So, to start off, we'll just open up a new project in Unity. Uh, sure. Now there's going to be two ways that I'm going to show you how to make the menu. One is going to be using Unity's text mesh, and the other one is going to be using delegates with C Sharp. Now I'm going to start off, we'll use this as our level one. And all we're going to do here is just show the player that they've made it to the first level. To do that, we're just going to create a simple little particle effect that will just be placed in front of the camera. And we'll just fiddle around with a few of these things. And there, right, we're good to go for this level. Now, I'm going to do the text mesh first because it's definitely the easiest. And. So you start a new scene, and all right. Since this text mesh is actually in the world, we're going to create a simple scene using just a cube, just so that there's something else in front of the camera. And we'll just stretch that out. All right. Awesome. And save this as 3D menu. <clears throat> Alright. So before we start, let's go into the build settings and put our menu in there and then level one. You're obviously going to want to have your main menu before any levels just so the player runs into it. Um, and now our next step would be to get a true type font from Windows to use as our text. They're pretty easy to find. Just go to your C drive or D or whatever your main drive is, and go to Windows, go to Fonts, and there's tons of these things in here. So if you can't find one, you're too picky. I'm picking Comic Sans because it sucks and everybody hates it. Alright, so copy it and paste it in your project folder in your assets. Now, there's, if, you're probably only going to need one, so I'll just get rid of that. Okay, never mind. Now, I'll delete it here then. Alright, now when you import a font and you're using it in a 3D space, you're going to want to increase the font size. The bigger you stretch out your font, the more pixelated it's going to get. So when you increase the font size, it literally just increases the size of the texture, so you reduce the pixelation. I'll just set it to 40 for now. And characters, we're going to want to go to ASCII. And there, that's good to go. Now create a 3D text, and here we have our Hello World. Now, what I like to do is I set the anchor in the middle center and alignment to center. That way it just keeps things neater and just, I like to do it that way. Now, this will just be the title, I guess, so we'll just call it Main Menu. And for the scripts that we're going to attach, we'll attach a box collider. Now, for the Start Menu, and or Start Game and Quick Game sections, we'll just duplicate, duplicate uh, the Main Menu. And just drag it down. 
we'll change this to quit game. Change this one to start game. And sure, let's make it smaller so it stands out from the main menu. Just change it to 0.6. And you can really move these wherever you want. I'm just doing it this way because I want to. Um, yeah, let's name these up here too. That way we have we know which is which. So this is basically all you need to set up this scene. So we can just start the scripts now. So I use C# -sharp as a or personal preference. You can use JavaScript if you want to. Um, if you can code in one language, any other language shouldn't be that hard to pick up. So let's call this script menu object. And double click to open it up. And depending on what your default is, I have Mono Develop. You might have Visual Studio, or you might have Unity's built in editor, which isn't very good. No offense, guys at Unity. Um, Alright, so change the class name to menu object. Oops. Alright, there's a few simple functions that we're going to use to get this going. These are already built into mono behavior, so we're just overriding them basically. First one is on mouse enter. Void on mouse enter. What we're going to do is um, take the material that has the text in it and change the color of it when the mouse goes over it. This and a few of the other functions in here is why we needed the box collider because it will not detect anything if there is no collider on it at all. So to change the color, it's simple. One line, go render dot material dot color equals color red or blue or whatever you want it to be. Now for the next one, we want to change the color back when the mouse leaves. So on mouse exit and then do basically the same thing but change the color back. Really simple. And test it out. Oh, before you test it out, you have to attach it. Alright, now we test it out. Yay! Alright. But these really don't do anything at this point. So our next function will be on mouse down which will detect whether or not the user clicks on it. Now, since we have two different things this is going to be doing, quick game is obviously going to quit game, and start game is going to end the level. Instead of making two separate scripts, we'll just make a quick boolean that we can change in the editor called isQuit, and default it to false. Now on most down, if is quit application dot quit else application dot load level, you can either use a number or the string name. I set it to two, so I'll just use that. Actually, you know, that'll be one because it starts at zero. Okay, so this should all work. For quick game, make sure you set this to true in here. Now, it won't do anything in the editor, but uh, if you were to build it, it would exit out of the program. And if you hit start game, 
we load up the next level. And we get that pretty little particle effect. Ooh. All right. Now, our next one, which is using delegates in C Sharp, it's a little more complex, but you get more functionality out of it. You just don't get the nice little 3D text going on here. It's like with this, you can have it animating, have things walking in front of it. 